Okay, so still we are on nucleotides. So the molecules without phosphate group is called a nucleoside. Remember, I told you if there is no phosphate group, then it means that you have nucleosides. That is just sugar and bases is nucleoside. So the, nitro the nitrogenous bases of nucleic acids are derivatives of two parent compounds. And these two parent compounds are furines and furimidines. The nitrogenous basis of nucleotides is linked covalently to phosphate sugar by beta N glycosidic bond. So it means that the linkage between the nitrogenous base and the pentose sugar is through the beta N glycosidic bond. What do you mean to it by beta N glycosidic bond? It means that the uh the pentose sugar and the nitrogen are linked to the nitrogen who so is binded like the carbon one of uh, the sugar is binds to the nitrogen from the nitrogenous base, and that is why it's called beta and glycosidic bond, and almost all. You see, in the case of pyrimidines, in the case of pyrimidines, the carbon one of the pentose sugar linked with nitrogen one of pyrimidine. So you see, you should understand this. The pentose sugar form glycosidic bond with nitrogen one of furimidine or nitrogen nine of furin. So it's important we should know this, okay? So now what are the functions of nucleotides? Now we are talking about the functions of nucleotides. So number one, nucleotides are the activated free courses of DNA and RNA. It means that it is the activated form of these nucleotides that are used in the formation of DNA and RNA. And then ATP, that is universal currency of energy. The energy we use, the energy we use, the energy that we use making us to survive, making us to work, making us to do all the activities we are doing is the ATP. So if we said we have energy, it means it's ATP. And if we say we don't have energy, it means that we don't have ATP. So ATP is the energy we are using for our survival and our daily activities of the human body. And then we have GTP. GTP is guano, is, is uh, guanine, triphosphates, and ATP is adenosine triphosphates. So guanine triphosphate is involved in protein synthesis as a source of energy. So when we want to synthesize proteins in our body diet, we want to produce proteins like hemoglobin. So we use uh, GTP as a source of energy for that. And then activation of metabolic intermediates. So we use these nucleotides for the activation of metabolic intermediates. So it's used as the, for the activation of metabolic intermediates, like for example, glucose and, and diacylglycerol. So you see in producing uh, what you call like uh, lipids, if you want to synthesize protein or if you want to synthesize glycogen in a cell, so we need to activate those precursors. So the activation of the precursors, we usually use nucleotides to do that. And then they are also carrier of methyl proof, methyl proof. Like for example, in the vegetable synthesis of some uh, nucleotides, we use these nucleotides as a carrier of methyl proof. Then we have some of these nucleotides are the component of coenzymes like NAD, FAD, and coenzymes A. NAD is nucleotide adenine diphosphates. 
and we have flavin, flavin adenine in the nucleotide. So all these, they are component of coenzymes. So when we say component of coenzymes, it means that there are enzymes that do not function until these coenzymes are added, until these molecules are added. That is why they are called coenzymes. And also, some of them, they are metabolic regulators and the chemical messengers. So example of metabolic regulators and chemical messengers, we have CAMP, that is cyclic adenosine monophosphate and cyclic guanosine monophosphates. So sugar in nucleotides, what are the sugars that are found in nucleotides? So remember we said that we have two kinds of sugars or two types of sugars which is uh, ribose sugar and deoxyribose. So the ribose sugar of RNA, it contains beta D ribose. That is, remember, I said they contain ribose sugar. So that is it. So the specification of that sugar is beta D ribose. And the DNA contains beta 2 prime deoxy D ribose. So the free piece deoxy means without oxygen. So because that is why it said that is why it is two prime. So it is two prime because at carbon two, carbon two there is no oxygen. And that is why it's called beta deoxyribose. So nucleoside can be hydrolyzed to use nucleosides and phosphoric acid. So you can hydrolyze, it means that you can break down nucleotides to produce nucleoside and Phosphoric acids. So these are the pentose sugar. Look at them. In the ribose sugar, look at the two prime, two prime carbon. The two prime carbon, you can see that clearly there is OH. But if you go to deoxyribose, it means you realize that there is no oxygen. So no oxygen is bonded to this carbon. And that is why it's called deoxyribose. And then now we are moving to the nitrogenous basis. So for the nitrogenous basis, remember we said we have furins and pyrimidines. So pyrimidines have two rings, while pyrimidines have only one ring. So the furins, these are the furins, adenine and guanine. So look at them. They are heterocyclic compounds. So guanine and adenine. So guanine and adenine, they are found both in DNA and RNA. So DNA and RNA contain both adenine and guanine. And then the next one is pyrimidine bases. So the pyrimidine bases, we have cytosine, uracil, and thymine. So these are the nitrogenous bases. So cytosine is found both in DNA and RNA, but thymine is only found in DNA while well, uracil are found only in RNA, so you should know this. So these are the furines and furimidines. So this is how they are numbered. Furines and furimidines are aromatic heterocyclic compounds contain both carbon and other elements. So that is why they are called heteroatoms. So the heteroatoms, it means that they are atoms that are not carbon, not nitrogen. Sorry, not carbon, not hydrogen. So heteroatoms are other atoms apart from carbon and nitrogen. So we have some biologically important bases. We have uric acid, we have hypoxanthin, and we have xanthin. So all these they are nitrogenous bases, and they have they are also they are unimportant. Like for example, we have uric acid, and uric acid is another purine base. It's another purine. And usually it is the end product of furin nucleotide catabolism. So when we catalyze, we break down uh, purines, the end product is uric acid. So, and this uric acid is waste. We don't need it in our body. We have to eliminate it. So that is why sometimes if we have very high concentration of this uric acid in our cell, and that we can that our body cannot actually excrete this uric acid, then it leads to a disease. And that disease is called gout disease. We all know gout disease. That is the disease that usually associated with the signs and symptoms of inflammation of joint, inflammation of joints. Okay. 
And then you also have other urine bases, which is hypoxanthine and xanthine. So they are also intermediates in the formation of adenine and guanine nucleotides. Okay. So now we have base plus sugar. So when you have base plus sugar, we have nucleosides. And we also have ribonucleosides and deoxyribonucleosides. So how do we get this nucleoside? So we get nucleosides, like for example, when we have adenine plus ribose. So adenine plus ribose, we have adenosine. So adenosine is a nucleoside. Guanine plus ribose, we have guanosine. Uracil plus ribose, we have uridine. And cytosine plus ribose, we have cytidine. So all these, they are found in RNA. That is why they are called ribonucleoside. But for the deoxyribose, we have adenine plus deoxyribose. So that is why we have deoxyadenosine. Guanine plus deoxyribose, we have D guanosine that is deoxyguanosine then we have cytosine plus deoxyribose we have deoxycytidine and thymine plus deoxyribose we have dithymidine that is deoxythymidine so this is how the nucleotide looks like we have look at it here we have phosphate group we have the nitrogenous bases and we have the sugar so that is why we have cytidine monophosphate because the phosphate is only one and then we have also uridine monophosphate because it's only one phosphate so that is why it is called monophosphate and then we have deoxyhymidine monophosphate it's because there is no o there is oxygen at two fry and then we also have adenosine monophosphate and we have guanosine monophosphate for the purine nucleotides So this is how they looks like, and this is adenine, for purines, guanine, and then for the for the pyrimidines, we have uh, uh cytosine, uracil, and thymine. So now look at if you look at this, we have nucleosides, and when you have phosphate, then we have nucleotide monophosphate, and it can be nucleotide diphosphate when it is two phosphate attached, and then it can also be nucleotide triphosphate so like for example when you have one phosphate so we have nucleotide monophosphate when you have two phosphates then you have nucleotide diphosphate when it is steady then we have nucleotide triphosphates okay so these are the furins so furins bases are nine membered ring structures consisting of furin ring focals also refused to Imidazole ring. So the atoms of furin rings are numbered in the anticlockwise manner. So if you want to number these atoms, so we usually number them in anticlockwise direction for in the case of furins. And we'll now look at it. Okay. Then adenine has an amino group on the six position rings. So look at them here. Look at the nitrogen in the case of purine ring look at how it numbers so it's numbers usually in the clockwise direction and then guanine also have amino group at uh, carbon 2 and carbonyl carbon at carbon 6 okay then we also have purine analogs. We have some purine analogs because these purines are the one that we use in as a nitrogenous basis for the building of the complete DNA and RNA. So these purine analogs, they have structural similarities but inhibit the enzymes involved in the metabolism of purines. Like we have allopurinol, sorry, allopurinol. This allopurinol, it's an enzyme, sorry, it's, it's, it's a purine analog that inhibits xanthine oxidase. So as a result of that, it's used in the treatment of hyperuricemia, that is gouty disease. And we have 6 mecapto uh, 6 mecapto purine. A 6 mecapto purine, it inhibits the nucleotide synthesis. And therefore, as a result of that, it's used as anti-cancer drugs because of course we can't have cancer cells without the 
irregular replication. Because of course, it's an irregular replication of cell that leads to the cancer. As, as the irregular cells are the developments, then at the same time, we are also, uh, the DNA of that cell is also replicating. So for we to stop the irregular replication of cell, you need to develop a drugs that can do that. So that is why six mercaptopurine is a purine uh, analog that can block the synthesis of this nucleotide. So as a result of that, it can be used in the treatment of cancer. Then we have also, at the same time, we have some metabolic intermediate. This formed during uh, metabolism of nucleotides. We mentioned them. We have hypoxanthine, we have xanthine and uric acid. Then we also have pyrimidine bases. So for the, for the pyrimidine bases, they are actually numbered in the clockwise direction. And this is how they are. Look at them. So ladies and gentlemen, now there are also uh, like some unusual bases of purines, which is methyl cytosine and dihydroxy uracil. So the methyl cytosine are found in DNA, while dihydroxy uracil is found in transfer RNA. Yeah, although actually we have different types of uh, transfer, sorry, different types of RNA, but I didn't mention them because this is just a basic uh, chemistry of nucleic acids, and I don't think we need to go that very deep. But apart from the transfer RNA, we have mRNA. T stands for transfer RNA. So apart from this transfer RNA, we also have mRNA. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. And apart from the messenger RNA, we also have ribosomal RNA. We also have small nuclear RNA. We have RNA interference. So all these are different types of RNA. So we also have pyrimidine analogs. So for the pyrimidine analogs, they also have like structural similarities, but act as inhibitors of enzymes or interact with nucleic acids. On one, we have pyrimidine is a pyrimidine analog which inhibits an enzyme's thymidylate synthase and is used in the treatment of cancer. It's used in the treatment of cancer. And then now, the structure of DNA. So DNA, as we said, is actually a polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. And the monomeric units are held by 3' prime, 5' prime phosphodiester ester bond as a backbone. And DNA is very flexible molecule and has the ability to exist in various forms based on environmental condition, a future known as structure for the morphism. So DNA is flexible, it can change shape depending on the environmental conditions. Okay. So DNA is double helix. It's double helix. It's double helix. So this is the DNA. So therefore, there is a fairing between one nucleotide with another nucleotide, and that is what makes it the double helix. And these double helix structures of DNA was actually demonstrated by the two scientists, and these scientists are Francis and Crick's. So Francis Crick's are the scientists that was able to demonstrate that DNA have a double helix structure. And this so this, or this uh, observation was made by this scientist in the year 1853. Okay. Then Chagab's rule. So a Chagab rules DNA have equal amount of adenine and thymine because 